Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nitin Choda with Ignition Time and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being a viewer. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. The Ignition Time channel is about the country, it's about the economy and it's about your money. The bipartisan group of lawmakers, the senators who are trying to put together a $908 billion package are still continuing because the $916 billion package that has been proposed by the White House with the blessings of the House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy and the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell was essentially rejected by the Democrats because it didn't do anything for unemployment benefits. It had a small amount for unemployment benefits, but the $300 a week booster was essentially taken away to make way for $600 stimulus checks and for money for dependents. Now, keep in mind that the Democrats have flatly rejected this. In fact, I'll show you some comments from Democrats so you understand in the past 24 hours, what has been the position of the Democrats, what has been the position of the Republicans. But what's interesting is that the bipartisan group of lawmakers have continued to work. And in fact, on your screen right now, you will see a six page framework that they released as recently yesterday. I'll quickly go through this framework and then I'll tell you what is likely to happen. Keep in mind, a framework is not a law. A framework is not even a bill. A bill needs to be drafted, then it needs to be voted on on the floor of the House, on the floor of the Senate, and then it needs to be signed by the President. So right now, this is just a framework. It's not even a bill, let alone law. So here's what the framework suggests. $160 billion in aid for state and local governments, unemployment assistance, extension of all pandemic unemployment insurance programs, including the PEUC, which is a 13-week extension to the state programs, the PUA program, extension by 16 weeks because remember unless there is congressional legislation for extension the PUA program the PEUC program and several other programs are scheduled to expire at the end of this month the unemployment benefit booster would be $300 per week for 16 weeks from the end of December until April 2021, meaning it would last for four months. $1 billion for technology for modernization and fraud prevention because fraud prevention was a big, big, big problem as far as the PUA program was concerned in California. I did do another video talking about prison inmates getting benefits through the unemployment benefit system program in the state of California. Just unbelievable. Also $300 billion to the Small Business Administration to continue the funding for the Paycheck Protection Program. Moving to page two, $12 billion in targeted emergency investments to help low income and minority communities withstand the impact of COVID-19. And moving on to page three, money for vaccine development and distribution, also money for testing and tracing. We'll provide you with a link to this PDF in the description section below so you can check it out for yourself. Now let's get caught up with where the key officials stand, where the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell stands, where the Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer stands. Let's take a look at the first segment from the Senate Majority Leader where he says, leaving here without a COVID relief bill cannot happen. He said this in the past 24 hours. Let's roll the tape and take a look. Let me say again, leaving here without a COVID relief package cannot happen. We have to get that done. I think both sides fully understand that. In the next segment, this is a major, major shift in the position from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. He said, let's set aside liability and aid for state and local governments and pass what we can agree on. Let's take a look. What's the way forward? We know the new administration is going to be asking for another package. What I recommend is we set aside liability and set aside state and local and pass those things that we can agree on, knowing full well We'll be back at this after the first of the year. Now, the response from the Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer is pretty scathing. In the first segment that we take a look at real quick, he said that the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is pulling the rug out from underneath the first responders. Let's take a look and see what he said. Now, Senator McConnell has put the jobs of firefighters, ambulance workers, sanitation officers, police officers in jeopardy. Every governor and mayor across the country or is has been fighting to keep these people working and McConnell is pulling the rug out from under them. In the next segment, what the Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said is even more scathing. He said that Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is sabotaging bipartisan good faith negotiations. All of this happened in the past 24 hours. I'm getting our viewers and subscribers caught up. Let's take a look. Leader McConnell has refused to be part of the bipartisan negotiations and now he's sabotaging good faith bipartisan negotiations because his partisan ideological effort 
is not getting a good reception. And while the two sides bicker and argue, the fact is there are a lot of helpless people out there who need help. Many of us are struggling significantly more than others and there indeed are a lot of individuals out there who desperately need help. Dick Durbin, the senator from Illinois, the Democratic senator from Illinois, said something today on the floor of the Senate that resonated with me and I think our viewers and subscribers should see it. They agree that there are a lot of helpless people out there. Then why are they wasting time? Let's see what Dick Durbin had to say today on the floor of the United States Senate. I think we need to be mindful of the fact that there are a lot of helpless people counting on us to do something. I hope we realize that this bipartisan effort put together by a group of senators, which I've been honored to be part of, is a good faith effort to answer the basic questions of what is needed now in America and what is needed on an emergency basis. It's a good bill, far from perfect. It deserves a vote on the floor of the United States Senate. If Senator McConnell has another proposal that he wants to put on the floor as well, he certainly has that right as the majority leader. But to close the door on this bipartisan effort is to reject a good faith undertaking by, by senators from both sides of the aisle, Democrats and Republicans. I plead with the majority leader, let's not claim some political victory if this is, when this is all over at the expense of a lot of helpless people across America who are battling this pandemic. And so those were comments from Dick Durbin, the Democrat from Illinois. What did the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell say today on the floor of the Senate? He did speak today on the floor of the Senate. You'll see this tweet on your screen from Jeff Stein from the Washington Post. And Jeff pointed out that the Mitch McConnell, Senate Majority Leader, today on the Senate floor repeatedly bashed Democrats for obstructing aid to unemployed Americans. The proposal released by McConnell last week contained zero in supplemental unemployment benefits for unemployed Americans. So there's that. Also in another tweet that you'll see on your screen right now from Jake Sherman from Politico, Jake pointed out that, and I, by the way, I did cover the outline uh, at the start of this video. He said, you can pass an outline. Nine days until Congress is planning to wrap up for the year completely. Uh, we need text, legislative text. Um, but but uh, and on top of that, we need buy-in from the leadership. We need the House Speaker to support it and we need the Senate Majority Leader to support it. Then we need a vote on the, on the floor of the House, on the floor of the Senate, and then we need the President to sign it. In a sense, the proposal from the administration, which is a $916 billion proposal that was presented by the U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin to House Speaker Pelosi last night, because remember, they had a call at 5 p.m. East Coast time. In a sense, that has actually complicated negotiations because what that does is take away unemployment benefits completely. I would not be surprised if somebody walks back so that we can come to an agreement. But what's what's unusual about this situation is that both sides now agree on the top line number. Both sides now agree that something needs to be done in the $900 billion range. We shouldn't be arguing about $908 billion versus $916 billion. But what's, what both sides cannot agree is that one side, the Democrats wanted unemployment benefits. And it seems like they were okay with not having stimulus checks because they did back the bipartisan framework, which does not have stimulus checks. But they flatly rejected the White House's counter offer, which did not include unemployment benefits, which essentially took away the $300 a week unemployment benefits for the millions of Americans on unemployment to make way for the $600 stimulus checks for a larger number of individuals. In other words, individuals who are not on unemployment would also get those stimulus checks. So that's where things stand right now. On your screen, you'll see an article from Yahoo Finance, which suggests that stimulus talks are in disarray because the White House proposal was rejected. And the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McCall this morning on the floor of the Senate describes the response from the Democrats as schizophrenic. Here's a quote from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell on the floor of the United States Senate today. He said, Secretary Mnuchin tried another new tact and sent over an offer. And in a bizarre and schizophrenic press release, the Speaker and the Leader said the administration was obstructing negotiations by negotiating. So what is the Senate Majority Leader actually referring to? On your screen, you'll see the joint statement that was issued by Speaker Pelosi and Chuck Schumer yesterday. And the statement reads, while it is progress Leader McConnell has signed off on a $916 billion offer that is based off of the bipartisan framework. The president's proposal must not be allowed to obstruct 
the bipartisan congressional talks that are underway. Members of the House and the Senate are engaged, have been engaged in good faith negotiations and continue to make progress. The bipartisan talks are the best hope for a bipartisan solution. Basically, uh, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, is saying that let's go back to the framework, which includes $300 a week. Now, to be honest, um, I don't understand why the two sides can't come together at this point because they agree on the top line number. Why are they now bickering over let's do stimulus checks instead of unemployment benefits? It's, uh, it's incredible. House Speaker Pelosi also wrote the president's proposal starts by cutting the unemployment insurance proposal being discussed by the bipartisan members of the House and the Senate from $180 billion to $40 billion. This is unacceptable. And now let's go back to the quote from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell in response to the statement from House Speaker Pelosi. Uh, and you'll see it on your screen again. And in a bizarre and schizophrenic press release, the leader of the Senate called that press release from the leader of the House, the House Speaker, bizarre and schizophrenic, bizarre and schizophrenic press release. The speaker and the leader said the administration was obstructing Congress by negotiating. Pretty noteworthy. You'll see this tweet on your screen from Jake Sherman from Politico who pointed this out. Uh, quite, quite unusual uh, words used by the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. And here's another tweet on your screen from Jake Sherman who actually caught up with the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell on his way to the opening of the Senate where the Senate Majority Leader gave, essentially talked about the press release being being bizarre and schizophrenic. And he was asked, what are the next steps in COVID relief talks? And the Senate Majority Leader responded, we are still looking for a way forward. Sounds pretty cryptic to me. And he didn't respond when he was asked what that way forward might be. That's it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Dr. Nitin Choda with Ignition Time. If you're new to our channel, I want you to know that the Ignition Time channel is about the country. It's about the economy and it's about your money. My name is Dr. Nitin Choda with Ignition Time. If you don't know anything about me, check out my video. You'll learn more about who I am, what my journey has been like and why you should listen to me. Remember that we release videos at 2 p.m. East Coast time most days of the week. That's 2 p.m. East Coast time most days of the week. You can get your cell phone out, send a text message with the word ignition or with the word time to 70,000. That's 70000. You'll get added to our SMS alerts list. You can opt out of the alerts at any time. We'll send you breaking news and alerts, news that's important as far as the country, as far as the economy, as far as your money is concerned. There's no charge for this and you can opt out at any time. You can also get on our email list. Simply go to ignitiontime.com forward slash alerts. That's ignitiontime.com forward slash alerts and you can get added to our email list. You can opt out of the emails at any point in time. Now, remember that YouTube does not always send out notifications on time. So all you have to do is simply bookmark youtube.com forward slash ignition time. That's youtube.com forward slash ignition time. And then you can visit the homepage of our channel and you can check out our videos at any point in time that you want. Also remember that you can follow us on Instagram. Our Instagram Instagram handle is ignition underscore time. That's ignition underscore time. Make sure to follow us on Instagram. We release exclusive content specifically for our Instagram community. Speaking of exclusive content, you can get breaking news from us on Twitter. So just follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is ignition underscore time. The same as the Instagram handle. That's ignition underscore time. So make sure you follow us on Twitter as well. If you learn something new from this video, all I ask is you please click the like button. Please subscribe. Please enable notifications that helps out the YouTube algorithm that tells YouTube that you found the content valuable. And I would really appreciate that. That would be your vote of confidence in us and all the effort that goes into this channel. You can also share this video with friends and family. Let's fight the good fight together and let's help spread honest, accurate information. We live in a climate that's highly divisive. I've mentioned this before and I believe this down to the core of my being. For me, it's not about the red or the blue. It's about the red, white and blue. I'm not Democrat. I'm not Republican. I'm American. We are all Americans first. So I think it's important for us to be able to help each other. Please share this video with friends and family. Please comment below. Our community is a very powerful community. It's growing. It's highly respectful. It's highly intelligent and it's bipartisan. So participate in our growing community. I think you might make some new friends. As always, you'll find links in the description section below for all our news sources so you can check them out for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Take care. Bye.